A town is full of buildings, some tall, some short, some wide, and some narrow. The buildings are flats and houses and factories and shops. They're built in streets. The streets have cars and buses and lorries driving along them. The cars and buses and the streets are full of people. In fact, there are a lot of people in a town. Do you live in a town? Mary, Mungo and Midge live in this town. They live with Mary's mother and father in this tall block of flats. They live right at the top. There are eight flats built on top of each other. Mary, Mungo and Midge live in the flat with the flowers growing in the window box. There's Mary. There's Mungo. And there's Midge. Mary, Mungo and Midge have a large sunny room to play in. A room full of games, picture books and toys. Mary's been playing with her doll, but it's broken. The arm has come off. So Mungo is trying to help her mend it. The arm has to be fixed inside the body, but it's so dark in there, I can't quite see how to do it. Boo! Oh. Midge! Can I help? The best way you can help Midge is by keeping quiet and not giving everybody nasty surprises. But I'm sure I could do something. Better not, thank you, Midge. It only makes Mungo cross when you try to help. All right. I'll play some soothing music. Perhaps that will make Mungo feel better. Midge can't play soothing music. Excuse me, Mungo. You're sitting on my flute. Midge likes music so much that he's learned to play a flute. But so far he can only play one tune. He's ready to play it now. It's no good, Mary. Why not ask your mother to take the doll to the toy shop to be mended? That's a good idea, Mungo. She's going to the shops this morning. We could go with her. Oh, yes. Let's. I think you'd be safer at home, Midge. Come on, Mary. Let's go and see your mother. So Midge was left all alone. For a while, he went on driving his car. But all the time, he was thinking about the toy shop. It sounded interesting. He'd never been to a toy shop before. How could he go too without anybody knowing? Then he had one of his good ideas. While Mary and her mother and Mungo were getting ready to go out, Midge could hide inside the doll. He was so small, nobody would know he was there. Mary came back to take the doll. Goodbye, Midge. We shan't be long. Goodbye. Be good. As they live right at the top of the building, they go down to the street by the lift. Today, Mary is going to get the lift. Midge watched from inside the doll as Mary carried it into the lift. And he was still watching as Mary and her mother followed Mungo out of the lift. Mungo stayed behind to make sure the lift door was shut while Mary's mother brought the car to the entrance. They waited for Mungo. Make sure the car door is shut properly. 
and off they went to the shops. Soon they arrived at the toy shop. The windows were full of exciting things, but Midge couldn't see them because he was still inside the doll. Mary gave the doll to the shopkeeper. I'll mend it straight away. It'll be ready for you by the time you've finished your shopping. Oh, thank you very much. As soon as Mary, her mother and Mungo had gone, and no one was watching, Midge came out. What was in the shop? Toys. 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 Everywhere. Midge had never seen so many toys in all his life. Ah, a train. Midge always liked trains. Oh, you're the guard, are you? And the driver as well. Hold tight. Bad luck, Midge. But an engine driver must learn how to stop the train properly. Oh! A bunny rabbit. Hey, what's your name? Goodness me, what a noisy rabbit. Oh, that does look interesting. A doll's house. Just the right size for me. Anyone at home? Midge, come back. You shouldn't just walk into other people's houses. The first room Midge went into in the doll's house was the kitchen. It was just like a real kitchen, and it was just the right size for Midge. There was a kettle on the table, and there was a cooker. Careful, Midge. Don't go too close. There's something cooking. Ah, oh, a sink. Oh, dear. Look at all that washing up. That looks too much like hard work. The next room had a fireplace, and a rocking chair, and an easy chair, and a table, and one, two, more chairs. But Midge liked the rocking chair best of all. There's a rug in front of the fireplace. Careful of the fire, Midge. You might get burnt. What's upstairs? A bathroom and a bedroom. The bedroom was very smart and the bed was just the right size for Midge. He must remember that. Very nice. Midge wished Mary had a doll's house like that. Everything was just right for him. Mary did have a ball like that, and Mitch had become quite good at balancing on it. Careful, Midge. Whoops. Ah, a teddy bear. There's something else to make a noise with. A piano. It's all right, Midge. The toy shop man hasn't come back yet. That's it. Bow to the audience. I suppose you'd like a piano at home, too. There's another animal, Midge. It's made of wood. Hello, horse. How about a ride? Gee up, horsey. Gee up. Or do you want me to take you for a ride?
Oh, it's hard work. Oh, that looks exciting. Midge saw a toy spaceman standing beside his rocket. Good morning, spaceman. How do you get to the moon? In the rocket. I see. How exciting. Perhaps I could go to the moon. Only, no, it does look rather a long way away. I might never see Mary and Mungo again. I think I'd rather be a fireman. Careful, Midge. Mind you, don't fall. From the top of the ladder, Midge saw some dolls at the other end of the shop. Perhaps he'd better see if one of them was Mary's. And anyway, it was a good excuse for a ride in the fire engine. But that's a boy doll. That doll's got dark straight hair. Mary's doll has fair curly hair. And that's a clown. Mary's doll must still be being mended. I'm rather tired. <sighs> I think I'll go back into my house and have a nap. So Midge went back into the doll's house. And a moment later, he was snug in bed. Just the right size. Very soft and comfortable. Good night. Midge slept. He didn't know for how long, but the next thing he heard was Mungo barking. Mary's doll was mended, and she'd come to get it. Midge looked out of the window of the doll's house. He knew he had to get home too without anybody knowing, because he was supposed to have been there all the time. He left the doll's house as quickly and as quietly as he could. He climbed into the basket and hid amongst the shopping. He went to sleep again. And the next time he woke up, he was back in the flat. Mungo, you woke me up. I was having such a lovely dream. In the shopping basket. <clears throat> I dreamt I was in a beautiful house. It was just the right size for me. It had a kitchen and a sitting room and a bathroom and a bedroom. It sounds just like the doll's house in the toy shop. It was the doll's house in the toy shop. It's no good, Midge. I saw you running out of it and hiding in the basket. Oh, uh, well, yes. But it was very interesting. And when I grow up, I'm going to be an engine driver and a concert pianist and a fireman, and... And you know what you're going to be now, Midge? You're going to be a good mouse and do what you're told. Yes, Mary. At least... <clears throat> I'll try. <laughs>